Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at part three of our grass care series, which is going to deal with baling and collecting the straw, grass, and hay that we now have down on the field. There are several tools available to us to do this job, and just in front of us we have just a mere sampling of all of the possible options that you could use to collect straw, grass, or hay up off the field. Let's go ahead and look in the shop at some of those options. So under vehicles, we have in the center a forage harvester that we can use to once again collect the grass that is down on the field. For that, we're gonna make use of a forage harvester header in one of these pickup headers. These headers are designed to pick up grass windrow and run it through the forage harvester. And then at that point, it will then put it into a trailer that is either trailed behind the forage harvester or in multiplayer if another player is running alongside the forage harvester. We also have options to bale our straw, grass, or hay. And we're going to find those here under balers. And we have quite a few options of balers. We have this small baler, the MF1840. This particular baler will make 120 centimeter long bales. I call it the little baby baler. Only requires 50 horsepower to operate. Then we move into a smattering of round balers. We have the Pottinger Impress 125F Pro. This makes round bales of 125 centimeters in diameter, requires 100 horsepower to operate. We have the Kuhn VB3190, which we will be demonstrating in this video. It has the ability to actually make three different bale sizes from 125 centimeters to 180 centimeters, and it will also require 100 horsepower to operate. Then we move up to the combo baler wrappers, these would be used to wrap grass bales into silage bales. We have the Kloss Rollant 455RC Uniwrap. This will require a bit more horsepower at 145 horsepower and will be able to create and wrap 125 centimeter bales. We have the Pottinger Impress 185VC, which we will be demonstrating today. It has the ability to make and wrap. 125 centimeter, 150 centimeter, or 180 centimeter bales. Requires 150 horsepower to operate. On things that wrap, we also have the ability to change the foil color from white to black to pink, green, and blue. When we move up to the square balers, the large square balers, these are much larger in size and will require a much higher horsepower tractor to operate. We have base game Kloss Quadrant 5300 FC. It will make square bales that are 180 centimeters to 240 centimeters in length and requires 250 horsepower to operate. The New Holland Big Baler 1290 High Density, once again, requires 230 horsepower to operate and makes bales 180 to 240 centimeters. The Case LB436HD, which we will be demonstrating today, Requires 230 horsepower and again makes bales 180 to 240 centimeters. We have the Kuhn SB 1290ID, 195 horsepower to operate this one. Again, it will make bales 180 to 240 centimeters. The Crone Big Pack 1290HDPVC. This was added in the 1.2 update. It has an interesting option and we can add a silage additive tank to this particular baler. And if you bale straw and use silage additive, you will get a little bit of a yield bonus off of your field. So that is what that is for. And it requires 245 horsepower. And again, we'll make bales 180 to 240 centimeters. Now we've already talked about the Anderson Bio Baler in our Poplar video. So if you wanna go figure out what that does, it basically makes wood chip bales out of poplar. And then our final way that we're going to demonstrate collecting straw, hay, or grass 
is with a forage wagon. We have a Pottinger Boss Alpine 251. We really don't need to look at more than one of these. They all operate the same way. So this particular forage wagon will require 60 horsepower to operate. You can see that it will collect straw right here, grass, silage, hay, or chaff up off the field. And the way this works is it has a pickup in front that will pick up the product and deposit it inside of the trailer. And then when we are done, it will unload it out the back. So now that we see kind of the equipment that we will be able to use to do this, let's go ahead and get on with some of the demonstration. We're gonna start out with the little baby baler, the little Massey Ferguson square baler. And for that, I'm gonna use this small Ridgey Track electric tractor. They seem to pair up quite well together. Now, when you get this baler, it will be folded up in this particular configuration. When we get to where we're going, we will want to unfold the baler by hitting X. It will then unfold the bale chute out the back. We will want to lower the pickup. we can do with the V key to lower the pickup and then we will turn it on and you can see there we have now tines and an auger to pull product into the baler you see the bale being created here in the back And we start seeing bales spew out with some frequency because we do have some mighty big windrows here. And that is basically how we're gonna operate the small Massey Ferguson baler. Typically we would not have such big windrows if we were gonna be making use of this particular baler. Now, when we are all said and done, what we can do is turn the baler off and we're gonna hit Y to unload the baler. And what it's gonna do is then push out any full bales that may exist. We can then fold it up, raise the pickup, and there we go. Now let's take a look at the Kuhn VB3190. It is gonna represent the round balers in general. If we go to the F1 menu, you can see that we can hit L to change the bale sizes from 125 to 150 to 180 centimeters. We're not gonna to dive too far into all of the different bale sizes, capacities, weights, etc. In this video, I did another video a while back that covers all of the different bales that are available in Farming Simulator 22. 32, if I am remembering correctly, in total as far as different bales, bale sizes, and capacities. We also have the ability to turn on and off automatic drop with Z. So if it says turn on automatic drop, that means it is off. If it says turn off automatic drop, that means it is turned on. So let's go ahead and lower our pickup. Turn on the baler, and do note some balers will require you to unfold. This one did not. You can see we have our pickup running. The baler is now running. Our belts are moving. Now, round balers have a very distinctive operation feature. Let's call it a feature. And that is that you have to stop to unload them. So they will beep, as you can hear, as a warning to when they are about to be full. You can see that we are now full. We're no longer picking up material. In order to unload, we have to stop. We hit Y to unload the baler. The 
the rear opens up, we hit Y to fold the baler back up, and we can automate all that process by turning on automatic drop, but we still will have to be cognizant of when the baler is full. So we have to keep an eye out down at the bottom, the beeping, we need to stop, let it unload, and off we go again. For a lot of people, ram balers are not something that they like to use because of the fact that you are, well, stopping and starting rather consistently. Now, while I typically won't talk about mods in these how-to videos, Giants did release a Vicon Kuverlin Fast Baler, which is a mod that was available as part of a DLC in Farming Simulator 19, and its distinct advantage is that it is a continuous baler. So it is a round baler that can operate continuously, which means you do not have to stop to constantly unload the baler. So that may be something very worthwhile looking up. So that is basically a demonstration of round baler operation. If you're baling straw, grass, or hay, the operation of a traditional round baler is the same. You're going to select your bale size if the round baler has variable bale capacity, and you're going to then be stopping to unload the round baler when it is full. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the combo round baler wrapper. There are several of these in the shop. As we saw earlier, we're going to just demonstrate the Hottinger here. Once again, we can hit L to change our bale size because this particular baler will allow variable bale sizes. We can lower our pickup with B. We can turn on auto drop with Z. And then I want to just pick up where we left off. If you are baling grass, the baler will automatically wrap your grass bale and convert it into a silage bale or a wrapped grass bale that then needs to ferment into silage. Here we can see how it moves the bale to the wrapping tray. And at this point, we can continue moving along, picking up for the next bale. And then it will unload the bale. And now we are moving the bale back into the wrapping tray once again. If you move along at too fast of a pace, you will basically fill up your bailing chamber before your wrapper is done, and you'll have to basically stop and wait like that. And that is basically the process of bailing and wrapping round bales. Oftentimes I'll hear people ask, well, if you wrap or if you bale hay or straw with a baler that also is a wrapper, will it wrap the hay or straw bales? Then no, it will not. So you do not have the option of wrapping hay or straw bales. What will happen is the baler will just bypass the wrapping process and just unload the bale directly to the ground. That's what I wanted to demonstrate here. I do have auto drop turned off. So let's turn that back on. And we will go collect another bale of hay. And you'll see, it moves it to the wrapping tray. And then the wrapping tray will just immediately drop it off same process for straw will also occur. Now 
the last thing I wanted to demonstrate is that round balers have, in my opinion, well, balers in general have also, in my opinion, another fault. And that is that we cannot unload a partial bale. So here I have a partial bale. I don't have the ability to unload it. It is pretty much stuck where it is. There's no force unload. There's no, there's no ability to unload this bale. Now there's another interesting caveat to all balers in this particular instance where we have partial product. So you see I have 41% or 1,846 liters of hay. If I move down here now to grass and I start baling grass, you can see that bale is still hay. It has not changed to grass. It is not a partial bale. It is a bale of hay, but the wrapper is wrapping it. So it's a little bit of a interesting work potentially a possible exploit I don't really like to show various exploits but as you saw we started out with hay in the baler and then we collected some grass and the baler basically said in the end that it was a hay bale and therefore it wrapped it Now let's go ahead and take a look at the big square baler. For the most part, all the square balers are the big square balers are gonna operate the same. We're gonna need to unfold them just like we unfolded the small baby baler. Then we'll need to lower the pickup. We can change the bale size from 220 to 240 to 180. So 180, 220, 240. I'm gonna leave it at 220. And then we'll turn the baler on. Just like all the other balers we've seen, there is a pickup that will ingest product into the baler. And we can then see the bale start to be produced here in the chute. But a feature of a square baler is that it's a non-stop operation. We can bale continuously. We do not have to stop when a bale is made. As you can see with the indicator down at the bottom, we've already made at least one bale, if not two bales, in this process. Here we're about to make another one. Boom. We just made another bale. And then as the bales are generated, they will then be pushed out the back to drop down onto the ground. So that is a huge, huge benefit, in my opinion, to round baling or from round baling is that you can use a square baler and basically continuously produce bales. Just like with the round baler that we demonstrated, if you have a partial bale, see what happens here. Our fill type indicator is still grass. Once we fill out the bale, it will change to hay for the next. Let's see what kind of bale we get out the back end here. say it doesn't look as dark green as I would expect so I think we're gonna get a hay bale out the back which is a little interesting we'll see if we have no we do have it we do have a contrast there between the hay and the grass
fold it up, lift up the pickup, and that is basically how we make square bales. Pretty straightforward, right? Now I want to run through the Kloss Forage Harvester. We have the windrow pickup head on it, so it is ready to collect grass off of the ground. We're going to use our Annenberger trailer that we have used in a few other videos. And the forage harvester can actually attach to this trailer. We will pipe out. Then, oops. Then we will lower our header. Sorry, our header was already lowered. Turn it on. And we are collecting straw with the pickup header. And we are shooting, or sorry, we're collecting A. Oh, grass with our pickup header. And we are shooting it into the trailer. Just like that. Now, we mentioned silage additive earlier. The forage harvester can have silage additive added to it. That is what that little fill icon is down there below the grass that is in the trailer. I'm going to go put some silage additive into this, and then I want to make another pass through some grass, and we'll see if we think that we are getting a bit more yield or not. Now, I said I was going to see if we got greater yield, but I just realized that these windrows are different capacity, so we're really not going to be able to tell if we get a greater yield or not. But as you can see, this forage harvester hold holds 20 liters of silage additive, and as we are picking up the grass and putting it into the trailer, we are slowly consuming some of that additive. But this is a quick way to increase the yield of your chaff if you are forage harvesting corn, for example, or if you are using the mower header and mowing grass this way and putting it into the forage harvester, or if you are picking up grass with the forage harvester, you can obviously use silage additive as well. Now, where do you find the silage additive? It is going to be in the shop under objects, pallets, and then we have our silage additive right here $2,990 for 60 liters. And if you remember, this particular forage harvester holds 20 liters of this, so you'll be able to fill this harvester up three times with that pallet. Now the last method that I wanted to demonstrate here today is the use of a forage wagon. We have the small Pottinger Boss Alpine forage harvester. We're going to unfold it or lower the header. We're going to turn it on. Just like the balers, there is a pickup operation that will run and basically draw in material. We'll see that material then come into the back of the forage wagon. And we are now collecting our hay. We can use this to collect straw, hay, grass, chaff, silage, if it is on the ground. And I wanted to also demonstrate the use of the hayloft to store our hay and straw. So here we are, we have now filled our small forage wagon. This is the smallest one. There are forage wagons with much larger capacities 
than this one, so don't be overly concerned about how fast this one filled up. As far as storing bulk hay or bulk straw, in game we have a hayloft placeable, and that is what this one is right here. And this hayloft placeable will allow you to store, just like a silo, hay or straw. And you're gonna unload it here at the blower. That is, in essence, blowing the hay and straw into the top of the hayloft here. And then you would pull product out here from the middle underneath and then you can have hay or straw from the hayloft you find this particular hayloft under buildings and then silos here we have the hayloft and rotate this 360 degrees and it will hold 250 liters of total product so that is 250 liters of hay or 250 liters of straw or 250 liters of any combination of hay or straw. Now if you remember, we had our straw field over here. I did go ahead and finish windrowing this from our part two video. And I just wanted to demonstrate that we could also collect straw can bale straw over here as well and there you go so guys i hope you all enjoyed this video maybe you learned something maybe you didn't this video really is intended for the new to farm sim player if you're an experienced farm sim player then you probably already know all of these aspects but maybe maybe you learned something new it's hard to tell we will be coming back for part four of this series where we are going to go over bale collection. There are several different options available to us in the game as far as collecting bales up off the field. And we're going to go take a look at all of those from manual collection using bale forks and stacking them on a wagon to using various bale collecting trailers. And until next time, Happy farming.